Good morning and welcome everybody to Friday Morning Prayer. Today is a special day, obviously, because it's our dear brother Richard's birthday. So on behalf of all our community around the world, <clears throat> we wish you, dear brother, a blessed day. So we will light this candle especially for you, <clears throat> excuse me, and for all your intentions that we promise to pray for. So we begin our Friday morning prayer by encircling you, dear Brother Richard, in the arms of divine love. And we call on our Father, Mother God, who creates life. We call on the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves life. And we call on the Spirit of God, who is the fire of life. And in the name of all God's beautiful creatures, in heaven and on earth, we wish you a blessed day. Amen. We begin our morning prayer with the opening prayer from the little book of Celtic prayers from my owner. And in Celtic spirituality, very much handed down to us from Columba via Aidan on Lindisfarne. Friday, we celebrate the communion of heaven and earth. I awake this morning in the presence of the holy angels of God. May heaven open wide before me, above me and around me, that I may see the Christ of my love and his sunlit company in all the things of earth this day. And now for our prologue of our Friday morning communion of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai. We entered the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Friday morning, we commune with the angel of earth saying, <clears throat> angel of earth, excuse me, <clears throat> angel of air, enter my lungs and give the air of life to my entire body. As you say this, you contemplate on the atmosphere around you as you connect with the rhythm of your breathing. And I would like to welcome Brother Richard, our dear Sister Jan, and Sister Sue has logged in. And for those who've not logged in, you're more than welcome. So let us begin with an informal morning prayer as we gather around this table of love. We, you and me, have been called by name. We have been carved in the very hand of God and in the womb of the Spirit, God breathed the very breath of life into our being. So we come here to celebrate another new day and God's abundance to us. Our first reading is from Psalms Now. And again, I've not prepared for morning prayer I've left it open to the Spirit of God. Psalm 40. I searched long and shouted for God. It finally paid off and he responded. He reached into my pathetic emptiness and planted objective and purpose there. Now I feel like singing. There is genuine meaning for my life. And maybe I can tell others on this concept of really finding themselves in God. Those who are thoroughly fed up with the fly-by-night objectives of this ephemeral existence, who will look to their creator and seek out his will for them, they will also find something to sing about. There is love and concern here and meaning and purpose far more than one can possibly imagine. Our God is not looking for genius. He does not require great talents. He is not charmed by our panic-ridden activity. 
He simply asks for our faith and our obedience. It was when I turned from self-seeking to embrace His will for my life that I discovered serenity and security. Thus I am compelled to express in word and in deed the glad news of God's love and concern to anyone who will listen. And the Lord knows that I have honestly tried to do this. My frailties and my failures are many, but I have not cheated on this score. I have proclaimed the salvation that God offers to each one of us. But my conflicts have not ceased. My sin-permeated nature still plagues me. I still feel overwhelmed at times by my faults and fallibilities. I am disturbed and depressed when others fail to understand and accept me. I need to rely continuously on the grace of a loving God. God grant that all who search for life's meaning may discover such in a relationship of love and trust in Him. They shall then know His greatness and proclaim His praises. As for me, foolish and sinful though I am, I know that God will never cease to love me. Let us stay with that reading and let us allow the Spirit of God to speak to our hearts and to show us that the moment we call on the name of God and the moment we surrender our heart, our life, our worries and concerns and leave them with Jesus and just say thank you Lord for taking care of my needs this day and wait with an expectant hope that the Lord whom you love the Lord who called you by name will not disappoint you be still our next reading is from the little Christian booklet that comes to us every three months and for today we read a section on divine guidance. In Psalm 25 verse 8 we read, He sends them in the right direction. Throughout scripture God talked to ordinary people and he'll talk to you too. He told Abraham when to leave home See Genesis 12, verse 1. And Jacob went to go back home. See Genesis 31, verse 3. He told Elijah where to find food in the middle of a famine. See Kings, chapter 17, 1 to 5. On two different occasions, he stopped Paul from walking through what appeared to be a door of opportunity because he had something better in mind for him. And the Bible says, God is fair and just. He corrects the misdirected, sends them in the right direction. He gives the rejects his hand and leads them step by step. From now on, every road you travel will take you to God. Follow the covenant signs. Read the charted directions in Psalm 25, verses 8 to 10. Nothing is more important in life than being led by God. Other people's input should confirm and clarify what God's already telling you. But until you've heard from him, you'll be t tempted to think other people's ideas are God's leading and that can hurt you. You're unique 
and God has a unique plan and purpose for you. When you're not sure which way to go, stand on his promise. I'll take the hand of those who don't know the way, who can't see where they're going. I'll be a personal guide directing them through unknown territory. I'll be right there to show them what roads to take, make sure they don't fall into the ditch. These are the things I'll be doing for them, sticking with them, not leaving them for a minute. Isaiah 42 verse 16. It doesn't get any better than that. That is a beautiful reading and reflection for today. Divine Guidance Well, it's my belief that if you celebrate a birthday today, which Brother Richard does, you're actually celebrating two birthdays. You're celebrating the birth of your personal guardian angel, who was assigned to you by God to walk with you, to care for you, to guide you, to empower you, listen to your heart not your head. So today, in celebrating these two wonderful birthdays, both Richard's and your guardian angel, we must make time to listen to our angel who carries us to the light of God's love. Our final reading comes from the Lord Jesus himself. And it comes to our dear brother Richard. That's what my heart has just told me. So today, Friday the 16th, we read, I designed you to live in union with me. This union does not negate what you are. It actually makes you more fully yourself. When you try to live independently of me, you experience emptiness and dissatisfaction. You may gain the whole world and yet lose everything that really counts. Find fulfillment through living close to me, yielding to my purposes for you. Though I may lead you along paths that feel alien to you, trust that I know what I am doing for you. If you follow me wholeheartedly, you will discover facets of yourself that were previously hidden. I know you intimately, far better than you know yourself. In union with me, you are complete, dear brother Richard. <clears throat> In closeness to me, you are transformed more and more into the one I designed you to be. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful message from Jesus for your heart, dear brother, and also for each one of us here. We give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks. And yet, that same invitation is offered to everybody. It's offered to every child of God, born of woman, regardless of their religion, their color, their creed, or their lifestyle choice. Jesus came for all faiths and none. And though everyone is called to agape, to take part in this beautiful festival of love, only a few say yes. And of those who are called to the monastic and religious life or holy orders or serving others in God's name, only a few stayed the course. Only a few. Many get sidetracked with their own ego and their own pompousness. So let us as a community hold steadfast to the promise of Christ that when we are in need, let's call on him. Let's trust him. And let's believe in our heart 
that yes, we are all unique. Sister Sue is unique. Sister Jan is unique. Brother Richard is unique. And those who've not logged in or who will watch this live recording at a later time today or tonight, you too are unique. So in our uniqueness, let us come to our morning intercession. Let us come as a beloved of God into the temple of the Most High and let us sit in the presence of God and as we breathe in we are breathing in the very breath of God and in our out breaths we are opening our heart to the wisdom of God. <clears throat> at the beginning of morning prayer we offered it especially today for brother Richard's personal intentions and his birthday so we bring our dear brother to Christ because we know that brother Richard has dedicated his life to Christ <clears throat> as an ordained priest for 15 years and his anniversary was this week and I know that Jesus wants to do great things for you, dear brother. But he's asking you to be still and to trust and to manifest your abundance by putting out your request to the universe and stepping back and just saying, thank you, Lord. I am ready to receive when you provide. Amen. If anything is troubling you today, name it, bless it, because it's yours, and release it to God in a mindset of gratitude, and just say thank you, God. Keep on saying thank you, God, every day, and when the time is right, the Lord will provide, and you will be overwhelmed by God's goodness for you. So now for our intercessions. <clears throat> o God of all life, of each life, I offer you my prayers in the love of Christ, in the affection of Christ, in the company of Christ. As your own household desires in heaven, so may I, with you, desire on earth this day. Let us pray for the coming day and for the church and all religions to unite instead of insulting God by walking away from one another. Let us pray for unity and peace within the whole family of God, for tolerance, for respect, for compassion. And with Jan, we pray for all on our healing lists and for my brother Shay. And yes, I had a late night Skype with my sister in Dublin to say that yes, the tests are positive. It is a nasty cancer, but it hasn't spread. So they're going to perform um, a course of radium beginning next week. And obviously you will have a stoma, a colostomy bag to rest the lower bowel whilst the radium is working. So we give thanks to God that it's not spread and that he remains in a positive mood. And thank you all for remembering my brother. Thank you. This morning I want to pray for all our community, past and present members. I want to pray especially for our four new members joining our community, who will be received on the Feast of St. Francis, our brother Richard, our sister Lisa, Sister Pamela in America, Sister Sheila in Scotland. And I pray that the Spirit of God will empower their hearts to take responsibility for their spiritual journey, regardless of what other people are saying to them, that they listen to one voice, the voice of Jesus. I pray today for all the men and women 
who've dedicated their lives to Yahweh, to Allah, to Jehovah, to the I Am Presence, to the Creator Father Mother God. I pray for Brother Paul from the Franciscan Hermits in America and for Brother Bjorn. I pray for our own prayer leaders and for all Franciscan brothers and sisters within the Christian Church, that they will unite, that they will come together instead of all being insular in their own little castles and ivory towers, but that they will break down all the barriers and work together like Francis did. And we pray today for dear Jan, who's looking after her little grandson. And we pray that she has a wonderful time with him. And that that little child will bless Jan with the innocence of childhood. For all God's children, and for the many, many, many souls who ask us to pray for them, we bring them all, including Skip and all our friends on social media, who give us so much support to carry on with daily prayer because it touches their lives too. Blessed are they, said Jesus, who do not see me but yet believe. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. I want to finish with a special prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and dedicate this for dear brother Richard on this special day. And it's taken from the original translation of the Aramaic, the Lord's Prayer. O birther, father, mother of the cosmos, focus your light within us, make it useful. Create your reign of unity now, your one desire then acts with ours, as in all light, so in all forms. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Loose the cords of mistakes binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. From you is born, O ruling will, the power and the life to do, the song that beautifies all, from age to age it renews. Truly power of these statements, may they be the ground from which all my actions grow. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And now for the closing prayer. My Christ, my love, my encircular, each day, each night, each light, each dark, be near me, uphold me, my treasure, my truth. That is a beautiful Celtic prayer. And now, for the Celtic blessing, let's bow our heads in the presence of God. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this day and on every human family, the gift of heaven and earth, the gift of brother sun and sister moon and the gifts of the animal kingdom be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. And as I blow out this light, I blow peace, love, joy to each one of you. And I wish our dear brother Richard a truly blessed day, a day when you will meet with your guardian angel and that they will show you the face of Christ for all the years that you have given to him in service and in struggle and in strife. Let today be a truly blessed day. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. 
Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Pax et Bonum. Om Shanti, Solo de Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of the risen Christ set you free from worry and fear, and that today be the first day of the rest of your life. Amen. Thank you for being here. If it is your bedtime, sleep well. But if you're beginning your day like the rest of us here, then have a beautiful day and know that you are loved.